Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, it's a very somber day for our justice system. Uh, a horrific and senseless and brutal murder happened in Orange on October 5th during a home invasion. And it left a very kind, generous gentleman, Thomas Hardy, murdered brutally at the scene. And his wife, Joanna Fisher, severely injured, and she's recuperating, and her loved ones uh, are with her and helping her back. And the UMass uh, Medical Center provided uh, life-saving uh, help to her. And I want to thank all the paramedics and hospital personnel that were involved that, that helped uh, save her life and also are now bringing her back to recovery. Uh, we've provided uh, factual basis uh, of these charges, uh, the most serious being uh, first degree murder. Uh, I want to thank the Orange Police Department. Our chief is here today uh, who came to this crime scene and really preserved it and really moved the investigation forward. Our Massachusetts State Police the detectives attached to the Northwestern District and many other state police that were involved, including the crime scene uh, unit that came onto the scene and, and did the uh, initial uh, crime scene investigation. I want to thank the many law enforcement partners that helped bring these two individuals, Brittany Smith and Joshua Hart, to justice. After the home invasion, in the murder of Mr. Hardy and leaving Ms. Fisher for dead. They left with the intent to avoid apprehension and justice. And thanks to the many law enforcement partners, from the state police to the Orange Police to many other police departments, including the Worcester Police Department, we were able to track them uh, in many different ways through credit card use uh, and other investigative techniques to track them down to Virginia where they were apprehended. I want to thank the Rockbridge Sheriff's Department that did an amazing job working with Massachusetts law enforcement to make sure that these individuals were apprehended and safely returned to Massachusetts to face the charges they have today. It is without a doubt that this crime was senseless. And we send our deepest regrets and condolences to every member of the Hardy and Fisher families. We can never return Mr. Hardy, a World War II veteran who fought for our nation in the Pacific, a vibrant individual who recently climbed Mount Monadnock. He had a whole group of people that he loved, and he's no longer here with us. But I'm very thankful as district attorney to have such a wonderful group of law enforcement officials. We have many people from the Massachusetts State Police here today, um, and it really starts from our detectives all the way up to our local law enforcement uh, to the leadership of Massachusetts State Police. So we're very thankful for the cooperation. And that blue line that never separated all the way from Massachusetts down to Virginia, we had the most professional help and everybody went out of their way to make sure that we could apprehend these two dangerous individuals and bring them to justice. I want to let uh, our Assistant District Attorney Jeremy Bucci, who is vital in helping to coordinate this investigation with our detectives uh, to say a few words. I extend our sincerest sympathies and condolences to the Hardy family. Uh, the pain and loss that they feel uh, is, is a pain and loss that we also feel. Uh, similarly, the Fisher families, uh, we understand that this uh, savage attack has left uh, poor Mrs. Fisher uh, in, in need of some serious medical treatment uh, and our thoughts continue to be with them and with her. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I, uh, one, one commitment that I'd like to make to the family is that we will 
work on this prosecution diligently and see it through. Uh, this is uh, something that we could not have done without the leadership of uh, the Massachusetts State Police under Detective Lieutenant John Cummings, uh, his executive officer, uh, Sergeant Chris Barron, uh, the case officer, Trooper Stephen Boucher, and uh, the many folks that Chief Lundgren from the Orange Police Department uh, lent, lent us uh, day and night until uh, these two uh, accused murderers were apprehended. Uh, similarly, I'd like to, to thank the uh, Rockbridge Sheriff's Department in Virginia uh, for the manpower and work that they did uh, to help us in securing both suspects uh, and uh, other law enforcement in Virginia that helped us to secure the, the stolen motor vehicle of uh, Mr. Hardy and, and Ms. Fisher. Uh, and, and with that, uh, I would uh, <coughs> suggest that <coughs> this will be a long process. This is just the start. Uh, but um, this team of law enforcement has demonstrated that they're willing to see this through. <coughs> and, and I'm proud to work with them. <coughs> All right. Questions? Do you know why? <coughs> In the motion to hold the defendants without the right to bail, we mentioned that this particular crime is alleged to have occurred because neither uh, Ms. Smith nor Mr. Hart wanted to return to jail or drug treatment. In the case of Mr. Hart, uh, he stated that he did not want to return to jail and, and feared that the stolen motor vehicle case that occurred earlier in the week was likely uh, to result in him being returned to jail either here or uh, Pennsylvania. And with respect to Ms. Smith, she had a, a pending commitment for drug treatment uh, on Thursday and an arraignment in, a, in the same stolen motor vehicle case and did not want to face that. Of all the houses in Orange, why did they do that one? That question was also explored during the investigation. Uh, it, there are some references in the statement uh, that we've given to, to the press that uh, we filed with the court this morning to justify our request for bail, uh, that they be held without the right to bail. And uh, one of the things that attracted their attention to this particular residence was that they were looking for an older model vehicle without a tracking device inside of it so that they could make good on their escape. Uh, and they hoped that they could recover some money to help them escape. Prior to this incident, uh, the suspects and the victims never had any interaction beforehand. No. It was complete strangers. These folks were minding their own business. They were living their life. They were watching TV that night. And it was a home invasion of such epic proportions. Uh, it lasted almost two hours. You talked about all the things that Ms. Fisher did to try to help her husband while she was obviously suffering um, trying to get a phone call out. Uh, I'm reluctant to go beyond the statement uh, that we've released um, as there are aspects of this investigation that are that are still very active. Do you know if the family would like to speak or give a statement at all about today's arraignment? Uh, they are present. Should they choose to do so, they can identify themselves and step forward. Um, I, I'm not uh, going to point them out. Chief, would you like to talk about what this, um, what this has been like for the community of Orange as you search for these individuals in the It's been devastating um, for the small town of Orange. Um, uh, everyone knows everybody else. These, these poor victims I've known my entire life. Well known in the community. Um, and you want to go home at night thinking that things like this don't happen in a small community. But they do. But it's going to make the Orange Police Department more vigilant. Um, going to do what we can do to keep our community safe. Uh, and while I have a, a, minute, a moment, I'd just like to thank uh, the Northwestern District Attorney's Office and the troopers assigned to that office. 
their professionalism, their dedication, their commitment to finding these two individuals, their genuine concern and caring about our small community uh, has just been heartwarming. Uh, I, I am just so proud to be associated with such a fine police organization. So uh, uh, Mary Carrier, Communication uh, Director, uh, as any uh, pertinent facts that can uh, be given to the media will we'll be in contact with uh, folks. Uh, thank you.